You're listening to Fit Pro Sessions with Parallel Coaching, episode number 10, part two. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman, and in today's podcast, I'm back with Ricky Knight from PT100K Club, and we're talking all about how to market your fitness business. We dial into Facebook ads and the setup of your fitness business. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Hayley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity, and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work, and that with the right structure, support, and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify, and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching. And you were just exactly. you. And I think that's a great message. You know, we just, we were talking before we went live on here about just being yeah. you in, an, in your most natural, unapologetic way that you are. Mm. It doesn't matter if you fluff it up. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't matter if you swear. It doesn't matter what you look like or sound like or there's an error. It, would, it just worked because you were yeah. you. That's, that's, and that's, that, that was exactly it. And so, as I say, it wasn't my main business or anything like that. And so it felt like I could afford to just not try too hard. You know, it was mm-hmm. a bit of a hobby. And actually, the other good thing with it, Neil, that I hadn't anticipated was that it enabled me to build up a network with, you know, people like yourself. All of a sudden, I was interacting with like-minded people within the industry. And so I got, I got a lot from that myself you know just because it it can feel a very lonely job at times when you are self-employed when you are a business owner when you're trying to drive your business forward it can feel very lonely at times am i doing the right thing and so i think that if you are able to interact with like-minded people it just it's more reassuring you can sort of share ideas with each other yeah. and actually that was enormously beneficial as well because you've got other um, players in your in your community that are driving their business in a slightly different way that you can pinch ideas from and they're pinching ideas from you and you think yeah well I, I would never have thought of that and suddenly yeah. they, they've just stumbled across whether it was on purpose or by accident they've stumbled across um, something to do with with collecting emails or something to do with um, how they do videos or a particular yeah. part of it. And you're like, oh, wow, I've, you know, and you're learning from other people that are pushing their boundaries as well. And that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing to be around because you say it's But lonely, the other thing right? as well is it's almost like building this mini community, which again is something that we then, uh, that we had in our gyms. It's, it was that, it was that private Facebook group. It's then when anyone, because like people might watch a video and then might have a question to do with yep. one of the videos they've watched, or it might just be a question, anything else. And I just made a commitment. I said early on, look, I will show up Monday to Friday, every single morning. I'll, I'll be there to answer questions. Okay. And again, I would put like an hour aside just to revisit any questions from the day before. It got to a point though, whereby before I got to it, so if questions came in like the previous afternoon or the evening, by the time I got to it, Somebody others in the group had already answered the question for them. Because you would, was, set the, was, you would set the, the, the context of a scene of this is a friendly community place. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly definitely. it. Yeah. And, I, and I still get so many people, they, they still come to me and they say, it, like the, 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 the private group, with the PT100, there's no, there's no pitching in there. There's no dicks in there because it's actually we're in an industry where there's a there's a fair few dicks and you know it's not really opinionated where everyone's like trying to get their particular point of view across it's just look not, let's, let, let's help each other out if you've got a question yeah. and I, I still have that today if anyone asks a question i'm there in the mornings the following day i'll 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 answer and i'll always just sweep up on like the day before and as i say that's that's still going it's not really time consuming but it's again it's it's just showing up yes it's it's like just providing that support but it's it's something that you can as i say you can also use within your within your gyms having that like we actually evolved it to a private facebook group but then also a private whatsapp group as well and it just sort of helps build that community because one of the things that we found in the gyms, it's easy. The look, let's face it, the easy part is showing up and doing the session. That's the easy bit. That's the easy bit. That's like 45 minutes, okay, let's say an hour in total. 
it's the other 23 hours of the day when people are like, you know, left to their own devices. And exactly. So there is a community that is built up that you don't physically have to be there in person to be a part of, then actually that helps to cement friendships. It helps provide support and motivation and accountability. All that sort of stuff. And, it, yeah, accountability and it actually, all that. it actually, it actually allows people to make a healthy in, in the context of training. It, from my experience, it allows people to make healthier decisions for the other 167 hours of a week over 23 hours a day, because they don't want to let the community down whilst mm-hmm. it's an external stimulus at this point, or, you know, because yeah. they're doing it on behalf of others. It's not long before they go, I'm doing it on, behalf of myself with yeah. the community so it's really yeah, it's powerful exactly that's you know, yeah. certainly something that we've got inside our our parallel inner circle again it's just a mm-hmm. facebook group there's mm-hmm. almost uh, 1100 learners in there now and i can i can hand on heart say since 2012 since we started that there's been not one dickhead comment <laughs> there you go. because it's just been about how do we learn let's move forwards as a group where we we put our hands up and we say we don't know and let's help each other. Yeah, Simple. exactly. And actually, I think, like, looking back, I think I've had one or two, like, yeah, dicks that have been in there, and I've just removed them. And, like, it's just, like, you've got to police it, like, as well. Yeah. Um, so I've just removed them. But then, so, so going on beyond that, it was a case of um, I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a business whereby I could run it from overseas. And uh, that's Amazing. just a personal thing. That's yeah. just something that, Myself and my wife, Alex, you know, we went traveling back in 2001, 2002. We, we always like, we, we, we like the sunshine, actually just like um, being near the sea and all this sort of stuff. And so it was a case of, uh, we tried Australia, we tried like different places and like couldn't get in. And so it was a case of, right, let's, let's, let's try and create a business where we can do this. And so in, I think it was like 2015 or something like that, we, 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 we tested it out and so went um abroad to spain for like five weeks and um you know got everything set up so that the business could run for five weeks without us being there so again this just comes down to the systems and the people that you get in place to make sure that happens and and it passed that test which was like okay that's pretty cool so then we tried it again the following year and uh again we did another five weeks and again it pass the test and so it's like okay well let's let's now let's do it you know let's 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 make this happen let's 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 move um and so we uh, we did that and then that coincided with us being in our fifth year and so it was a case of like you know moving to marbella in spain with the kids and getting them into new schools and all that sort of thing and then it's like right this is the real test now let's go (laughs) yeah it was it was like not just not just with northampton with us making sure that northampton could survive for longer than five weeks without our day-to-day involvement but it was then um our commitment that we had made to franchising that uh, that business and i think we 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 wanted to make sure that northampton was was good um, over a sustained period of time without us being there because if we could prove that then it was clearly something that then could be modeled um, elsewhere, replicated yes. elsewhere and so then um, I, get, I get confused with the dates actually but it, I think it was it was January last year January 2018 I think that's when yes January 2018 that's when we opened our we started marketing for it in 2017 but that's when we opened our our first franchise location up in Wakefield. And then in the May, we opened another one in Milton Keynes. And then in the October, we opened Wellingborough. And then the November, we opened Basildon. And that was really a case then of, right, let's now take a bit of time off to work with these franchises and make sure that everything is working. We learned loads then over the last year. I can imagine to... that was one sharp um, yeah, learning yeah, curve. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> crazy because it wasn't just um, one it was four <laughs> four in a year and it's like it was a steep learning curve all the things that we thought we had covered we realized we hadn't quite but you know we did say we were upfront and honest with the with the franchisees we said look you can come in at a much reduced um franchise fee 
because it, it's not perfect yet. You know, we, we're still building this. And so you pay significantly less. We're going to support you um, as best we can. But please understand that it's not going to be working perfectly. And so they were cool with that and got good guys on board. And uh, so we've learned loads. And, and as I say, we've now just, uh, just in the last 24 hours, officially opened our first one in Clenethley down in... Um, Congratulations, sir. Wow. So, so you've and, got Northampton and, and five other gyms now? No, so Northampton and five others. Five others, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, six in total. And so now, now we want to we'll try and get to 20 by December next year, which is uh, it's one of those kind of crazy ambitious goals that you set that you look at right now and it's like, okay, that's... Um, how are we going to do this? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you into a little secret. Um, when you first went away and you did your, I was, I was inside PT 100 K and I, I, I yeah. watched you go away uh, with family for five weeks. Yeah. And I saw for the first time again, somebody I really respected and trusted um, step away from their business and set up systems and processes to, to, to make it happen and, and, and come back from that five weeks. I saw you come back from that five weeks and have a real belief that it worked and yeah. it, and and i remember you saying it actually worked out better mm-hmm. you got better results you got more the business grew it grew business. while we were it grew and and that for, for me and Haley was was just radical and i remember kind of elegantly like pulling Haley in and saying like mm. watch watch what they're doing watch what they're doing um because you were a husband and wife team at the forefront of it yeah and yep. you know we, we'd had mentors and whatnot previously but it wasn't, it didn't feel like we could relate to them because they were in a completely different realm with totally different business setups and making, you know, millions and millions of pounds. So it, mm-hmm. it wasn't us. Yeah. Um, to cut the story short, we actually were at the point of moving. We had then gone on to travel around Asia for six weeks to do something very similar. And we provided evidence to ourselves based on, on the belief of your story that we could do the, very, the exact same thing. And we'd always held this belief that because we're based in Milton Keynes, we had to be in Milton Keynes. We had to be close to the academy. We had to be close to the classroom. A lot of our learners were local. And that we were scared to leave. If I wasn't in the business, it wouldn't happen. Yep. Anyway, we moved down to Plymouth. Um, that's where Haley grew up. You know, yeah. we, we can see the sea from our house. Um, we, go, we walk uh, you know, along the beach most evenings you know, it's just an amazing part of the world. And, and I mm. genuinely believe it's down to watching your journey and going, how do I create something online and face to face and having the strategy as a business owner mindset, not an operator. I don't need to be in the business and make it work. Mm. So I want to mm. thank you for that. <laughs> mm. No, I didn't realize that that was sort of part of the catalyst. I knew that, you know, you'd made the move down south to be near the sea but i didn't realize that was part of the catalyst it was one of definitely one of them definitely one of them so with that you know i mentioned about you know you're a role model and and, and mentor for me and i've had others uh, along the way what what role models or mentors have you had in the last couple of years to make this all come to fruition for you um to be honest with you there's a couple outside of the industry nice um so one of them being um he was he actually worked with our previous accountants which is a big accountancy practice but he was a uh, a guy that had set up his own franchise business and and sold it he'd actually been involved in the uh, what's it called a pronto print um uh, franchise business and and so that 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 we were introduced to him at the time that we were looking to um, like seriously up our, our our game with regards to the franchise business and do you know that that was something that I I didn't realise quite how much work would be involved with regards to you know your operations man you'd like documents and everything having systems in place for everything it 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 really kind of um opened things up but um you know that's been evolving over the last couple of years but he was a guy that that he once he met us and we shared our vision and because he'd gone through a lot of that he he 
he was you could see it in his he was he was excited by what we were telling him amazing nice and he was he was backing us and so like we we had the belief but when you get someone that's gone through it already that then sh- also shares that belief and he as i say he he's got just a normal day job working with this this accountancy practice and then i asked him i actually said to him would you be prepared to mentor me in these early stages of the franchise business um, to help us get where we need to where we need to be to sort of start taking these these franchise locations on and that wasn't it's not something that he does he doesn't advertise it he, he doesn't do it but because he believed in what we were doing he he agreed to do it amazing um and so but that's that's the only that's the only actual uh, mentor that I've had over the last over the last couple of years. So, as a, as a, as somebody that, that that's helped so many personal trainers, mainly within say say Facebook advertising, but marketing and advertising as well, uh, and and obviously you've set up six studios or six gyms now. What advice would you give somebody that? was getting into fitness, newly qualified or been in the, you know, qualified for a few years, but wanted to expand and get their own premises. What advice would you give to somebody for that? Um, so, so specifically for getting their own, their own premises. Yeah. Their own space. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? It's one of the, one of the downsides with the UK is that, um, we, we, we're not blessed with lots of space. So finding a unit is actually a lot tougher than you would think. Yeah. Um, My advice would be that you create a wish list of the things that are most important with regards to the unit that you find. Car parking is always going to be important. That's going to be up there because you, 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 you're not it's unlikely you're going to find somewhere that's going to have loads of parking on site certainly enough if you're going to be doing group training but certainly some kind of like you know parking nearby is going to be important um but then it's and this is one of the things that we found is that most landlords do not take a personal trainer seriously so I remember when we were first looking in Milton Keynes, I was very much aware of this because we'd been looking at other locations around Northampton as well. And landlords do not take like your just typical personal trainers very seriously. So what we ended up doing before they even requested it, befriended the estate agent, got really pally pally with the estate agent. And then actually saying, like, I wanted to, like, make an offer. I wanted to get this place. And before he even went to the landlord, demonstrating our track record, sharing our vision, sharing our accounts for the previous two years, and really adding weight to our offer so they could see that we were not, like, just some Mickey Mouse personal trainer. We were, we were serious. Yeah. And yeah. we were backing up our offer with um, our numbers, with our vision. You're not a waste and of time. You're not a tire kicker. No, absolutely. But we were being, again, transparency. We were being completely transparent and we were doing all of that before the agent or the landlord requested any of it. Amazing. So because we were on the front foot, like, I think it blew the agent away. He then felt more confident in recommending us as a uh, potential tenant. And the landlord, sure enough, accepted our offer. So I think when it comes to actually finding a location, first of all, um, make sure that you are, because I think the easy thing to do in this online world is just to go on to Rightmove, go, go on to Prime Location or something like that, have a look around send an email saying, yeah, I'd like to see this. And that, honestly, that sort of shit does not work because good quality units, if we're talking anything between, say, 1,000 and 2,000 square feet with decent parking on, say, the outskirts of town where it's, you're not going to get like problems with loads of traffic and everything, they come and go really quickly. And having worked within 
the estate agency type of market, I know for a fact that the best properties, they never even made it onto the website. I had a client a couple of years ago who was um, in, in commercial letting. And yep. I asked, I said a few times, I said, Mark, if you, if you hear of something come up, I'm after something around about 1,200 to 1,800 square foot. This was when yep. I, I had the boot camp moving. And I spoke to you about it at one point as well. Yeah, whether I, I go indoors or stay outside. Yep. Yep. And, and he said, Neil, you would not believe how quickly a unit like that is gone before um, I could even tell you. That's it. Um, it is. And then, and then to change the use of that unit as well. Yeah, exactly. For you, for you to um, use it as, as, a, as a studio as a gym. gym facility. Get the detail planning, yeah. Um, go through town planning. It's easier for the landlord just to accept another offer from somebody else that, that fits his category of what that unit's already set up for. Absolutely. And, and, and wow, it was so, a nightmare, I'm going to be honest. So how do you learn, qualify, and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching. No, it is. No, it, it, it really is. And this is why it becomes really important to have the relationship. So much of this stuff is down to relationships. Going back yeah. to what we said before, people buy people. You, you've got to build a proper relationship with a couple of the key letting agents, commercial letting agents within your area. Actually, like, you know, just befriend them. Like, go into the office. That sounds like revolutionary. Oh my God, like face-to-face <laughs> contacts. Goodness me. But What am I going to say? <laughs> yeah, but, but it stands out because yes. no one else does it. It's a yeah. bit old school, but it fucking works. But the, the, the point here, I think, is, you know, I remember when I was, I was looking at a unit, I, I, I went straight in and thought about, you know, I, how much space do I need to operate? I, at this point, I had almost 80 guys uh, in the membership mm. and... It wasn't until several weeks down the line, Haley actually asked me a question. She said, what would you put in the studio? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Don't ask me that. <laughs> I, I, gotta get one, I gotta get one first. Yeah. And um, I think that's, that's a key point that I hear is, it sounds really you know, funky and sexy. I put my rig over here and my TRX here. I'll have the AstroTurf, I'll have the, the, the Prowl of a Sledge, whatever. And the focus is on what it will look like, what it will feel like. Yeah the process of how do I actually get my foot in the door with this letting agent and, and, yeah. and build up a relationship with, a, with somebody from commercial letting. Yeah, absolutely. It's the golden it's, nugget here. It's absolutely essential. That's what you've got to do. So that when that quality property comes on the market, they think of you. You're the first person they call. Yeah. And that only happens. It goes back to what we were saying before, like with regards to like that person that's then all of a sudden they make the decision that they need to hire a personal trainer. You want to be the forefront of their mind so that they're the person, you're the person that they call straight away. And that's exactly the same with the letting agents. Just it's a fact that, um, and there'll be a few in the office as well. Each diff- different guy in that, you know, gets very competitive in there and it's the first one that can like, you know, get the property off the market. And so, you know, you want your name to be one of the first. And cool. so you, it does add an enormous amount of credibility if, to the letting agent before they've even found it, that you're presenting, as I say, things like your numbers, things like your vision. Like, so they take you seriously if you've got a track record of anything similar in the past, previous career, whatever it is, so that they just take you seriously. That's what you're looking at because the last thing they want to be doing is presenting an offer to the landlord, certainly on a good property, to a buyer that is full of crap. Like they, they just don't want to be doing that or a buyer or I say a buyer, but a tenant, the potential tenant that's then going to, um, uh, like have to like default in a year's time. They, they yeah, don't want to risk out at any some of that. Point. Yeah, yeah. Pull out at some point or not yeah. go through the full process, waste their time or yeah. be a tire kicker in, you know, once they're in, they, they just cause no end of problems. So they, yeah, I think this leads quite nicely on to, I got, uh, free uh, learner questions. So I'd like to kind of almost close the podcast off, uh, the, the Fit Pro session off with, I got three learner questions, one from Dave, one from Ben and one from Julie. So I emailed um, out the other day and said, you know, I gave them a little bit of gump of who you were, where you've come from and they've sent some questions in and I've got two final questions for you after that, Ricky. So um, I think it leads quite nicely on for, from Dave and Dave asks, um, I've tried Facebook ads um, it seems incredibly complicated. I've never had a response from it. Um, what three things would you give for me right now that I could, that I could do inside a Facebook ad? 
I, uh, I don't know Dave a great deal. I know he's in a uh, group-based exercise though. So the first thing to be crystal clear on, and we touched on this earlier actually, and this is one yeah. of the things that I think you managed to do when you're absorbing that content with the five minute video. And that is to be crystal clear on who your avatar is. You've got to be crystal clear on who it is that you're trying to communicate with. So again, one of the problems that I see is that they're like, oh yeah, I do a bit of everything for everyone. It's like, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. You really don't. So for us, you know, ours is all like ladies over 30. That's what we do. But it becomes really easy. The beautiful thing with Facebook advertising is that you can select the age range. So all of a sudden, um, they don't know this, like the, 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 the people that are seeing the ads, they just see in their newsfeed, hey, Northampton ladies over 30, we've got this cool thing for you. That's they're a like, coincidence. They don't, they're just like, oh my God, I'm a Northampton lady over 30, goodness me, this is, this is good. And so you're calling them out and you're like, Lord, you need... so, so one of the ads that we've got at the moment for this time of year, it's like, this is our last program of 2019. Anyone that promised themselves in January that we're going to get fit and healthy in 2019 and you still haven't done it because we know most people haven't. This is this your is last your chance. chance. Yeah. This is your last chance. So that's the hook. That's the thing that we're like, we're calling them out. Northampton ladies over 30, blah, blah, blah. This is your last chance. We then got a nice little, a, a little video of one of our sessions going on. And so they get, uh, because again, for our, our target market, they can, it's almost like them. It's a bit voyeur like. They're having a little like, peek through the window and to see because yeah. what they're what they're thinking about. Okay, so when I talk about like knowing your avatar, it's not just about like how old they are and everything. It's what are they? What are their fears? What are the things that keep them awake at night? What are the reasons for them not having achieved what they wanted to achieve so far? And so for a lot of uh, our target market, we're not after the fitties. We want the people that are a bit insecure, that have had bad experience in the gym, that. Um, uh, a little bit scared that they are too unfit to join group training. And so we want them to look into one of our little workout videos and see, because what they're thinking to themselves is, would I be the oldest? Would I be the slowest? Would I be the fattest? And so they, they have a look into ours and they can see all different ages, but they're all over 30. Some are late 50s, early 60s. They can see, so it wouldn't be the oldest because um, we don't target people above that. They can see that there's like all different sizes in there. So they know they won't be the fattest. Um, they can see people going at different pace, some going faster than others. So they're like, okay, well, I wouldn't be the slowest. And so we know that, like, and, and so that, that little bit of video of one of your sessions, you'd be amazed even at a subliminal level, yep. how much is happening there how many barriers, objections are being overcome just by them having a little glimpse. And it only has to be 20 seconds worth. Yeah. It doesn't have to be long. One of the just... things I, I used to do was, I used to work obviously, as you know, with 30 to 50 year old guys down in Plymouth. Yep. So I'm thinking, okay, so let's say the average age at the top, for most inside 5M club was the average age was 42. So I'm yep. going, right, it's 2018. If I go back 42 years, uh -huh. what year were they born? I'm like, cool. What, what, what did they have as, on TV as a child? What jokes did they come up with? Um, what things agitated them? What yep. things pissed them off? And I yep. would kind of go out of my way to make my audience feel some days loved and some days really agitated and, and really kind of poke the knife in and, and deliberately wind them up. And I knew that if at that point, if they still liked me and they still yeah. engaged with me, yeah. And then I present them with a, a video of me doing something out on the beach or in a local car park with clients. Uh, as you say, these subliminal messages come through yeah. and I think, yeah, I, I'm going to go and train with this guy. It's a no brainer. This yeah. guy's funny, he's witty, he's got a bit of comedy. Yeah. Same point is serious and it's backed by um, results. Let's yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I think that as far as like for, for, for um, Dave, the, 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 the the key thing then is just being very clear about who it is that he's targeting. Wicked. Okay. So we've got this, we've got this avatar and then you just craft a little bit of copy there. The message within that is then communicating directly with that particular type of person. Make sure then that the, the targeting within the ad set, because 
within the the ads manager we've got just just keep it dead simple okay yeah my advice initially would be to just set up a messenger ad okay Good. just keep this super simple like forget landing pages forget email automation all that kind of thing let's just get some people reaching out and sending you a message keep it inside so facebook have, yeah but yeah exactly so you just yeah. within the campaign that's where you set the objective so this is where it gets confusing because you like there's a drop down box and it's like there's about 12 different options yeah just select messages messages just select that one okay so we're going to set something up whereby there's a, a send message um, button. Then you go into the next tab. And that's the ad set. That's your targeting. So if it's for women and it's women over 30, then, then do something like, you know, between the age of 30 and 55. As you're targeting within there, um, do a pin drop on your location. Do a five mile radius. If you're in a congested city like London, maybe do a two mile radius. Um, then... Go down to the placements and within the placements, do you know what? Keep it simple at first. Just do automatic placements. Don't bother about editing anything. Just let, let, let the algorithm do the work, okay? Automatic placements. Move on to the next one, which is the third tab on the right-hand side, which is the ad itself. That's where you upload the little video, 20 seconds of one of your workouts. That's where you put your little bit of copy in there, calling out to your audience. Um, nice catchy little headline, say five words or so. Um, again, calling them out. So if it's like for us, the sort of stuff we've got going on right now is like designed for Northampton ladies over 30. Okay. Just so simple. Sort of thing. So simple. Yeah. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, and, and, and then stick, you know, 15, 20 quid a day on it and get people then sending you messages. And you know what? Here's the really important thing. When they send you a message, because you've got to have a call to action at the bottom of the, of the ad creative there. So just like send me a message if you want any info. And then when they send you a message, here's the crucial thing. Follow up with that lead in record time. You've got to, the longer you leave it, the colder they get. Do you know, the, the one thing we get, and, and I'm constantly saying to a couple of members on the team now, is if an email comes back in, based on a campaign we've done, I want a response out in under five minutes. Yep. And I've, I've seen a trend. Those emails that go back out or those messages that go back out from initial contact in under five minutes convert yep. like that. Because yeah. they, they, they've made us at the forefront of their mind. They've taken the time, energy, and effort to reach out and say, yes, I've got a question. Can you answer it? And I've been there before they can go and get distracted by another ad, another email, exactly. or, by, or by their kid, or by, by the, the dog in the garden, whatever. I've just stayed in the front of their head. And suddenly I've gone, oh, I didn't expect a response so quick. I really exactly. appreciate that. Yeah, that's exactly it. And so that's, that's the key thing. So it's, there's no point in having like done all that hard work with regards to creating like the advert. And then when, in, when someone sends a message, just be like, oh, do you know what? I'll get back to him tomorrow. No, 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 no. <laughs> the quicker you go, because I guarantee you, then you follow them up the next day and then they don't come back to you. And then it's like, oh God, Facebook ads don't work. They really do. But you've got to be quick. You've got to respond to the messages. When they send you a message, you've got to be on it quickly that is it at the moment until you actually then make a commitment to start learning facebook ads properly that's what i would advise that you do really simple like just set it up like that send messages you don't need landing pages or email or anything like that that stuff can come later but that i guarantee you will start bringing in good quality leads what one thing i found really helped and still does is having um the, the a strategy set up to say right i'm going to be asking for messages to come in on certain days so i set the ad up so i knew that i still know that i'm going to be in the office say on a thursday and friday so i'd set the ad up deliberately to so people could send me messages in amongst those days because it you know take this weekend i'm in the classroom all weekend i don't want loads of messages coming in because i can't get back to them yeah. So again, so it, it does it's just been a bit more add, strategic, it, isn't it? It, it does, no, 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 no. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good idea, and it it, it just adds. Um, it's not that much more complicated, but if if you're going to set things up on a schedule rather than sort of turn the ads on and off all the time, you Which can actually <laughs> set. You, you, yeah, yeah, and and that's not the greatest way of doing it, but you you can set up on a schedule. It does mean that you need to set a lifetime budget. 
Um, and then, and then you get, you're given the option whereby you can, it says, and this is within the ad set where you can actually then set it up on a schedule and then a little timetable comes up and you can literally just block out the times that you want the ad to be on. And it makes sense. You do that at the times that you're not going to be in sessions. You do it at times that, you know, it's not at like in the early hours of the morning and all that kind of thing. So yeah, that, that, that's a, again, it's a really good idea. That way you can ensure that you can respond to these uh, messages that come in super cool. quick. Um, Julie asks, my ideal, I love this question. Um, I, I can't wait for your answer. Uh, my ideal client isn't on Facebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How would you go about attracting them? And I know Julie's client. Um, it's exactly the same as your client for um, your Northampton gym or all of your gyms. It's ladies between kind of 30 and 50 years old. She's in group-based training, studio-based with step, that type of thing. She said, my, my, my ideal client isn't on Facebook where I live. I would be amazed <laughs> if they're not on Facebook. Um, here, do you know what? Here's something that, that, that might just add a bit of credibility to that statement. Yeah. I... I 100% did not believe because we started doing some specific stuff for over 50s. Okay. Just to get, um, uh, just to sort of segment the list a little bit. And I was like, ladies over 50, between 50 and 60, absolutely no way are they going to be on Instagram. There's no way you don't get ladies over 50 on Instagram. <laughs> I thought I'd just test it out. Leads started coming in of Instagram from ladies that were over 50. And I'm like, what? I wasn't aware of this. I was not aware that ladies over 50 were on Instagram. Yeah. Um, we, we get a ton. Do you know what? Recently, our last couple of campaigns, when we've targeted ladies over 50 on Facebook, and again, the, there is a, um, a lot of people might perceive there not to be a huge market of ladies over 50 that are on Facebook. When we actually targeted ladies over 50, they were our cheapest leads that wow. came in. And do you know what? Because you've got to remember, Facebook is just an auction at the end of the day. And there yes. will be other businesses that are marketing to these other age ranges. And I just think that the, that, that younger age range is a little bit more um, popular with other advertisers. The so over it's, 50s an, it's are a more a expensive bit... lead versus... Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, because so others... Ben, oh, there's a competing. Yeah, they're, they're all competing. So they're, they're, maybe they hold the belief. No way will a 50 year old lady be on Instagram, and so they don't they don't compete for that auction. Absolutely right. And well, it's the um, same with Facebook as well, though. Like the over 50s, they they are there, but there's a lot of other uh, gyms and personal trainers and everything. They do not want the over 50s in there, and so they won't target them. But we're like, they're, we're, they're cool, actually. Let's let's I get did them in. A, so. 45 to 55 uh, year old campaign um, yeah. but for guys in Plymouth yeah. and I drilled down a little bit further and I said that at this point they're probably in the latter end of their career so I want them to be earning a certain amount as well yeah and again not everybody when they set up their Facebook they declare how much they earn or where they work and whatnot and Lo and behold, there were still over eight, I think 8,200 guys between mm-hmm. the age of 45 and 55 that earn over 35,000 pounds that, that, that uh, worked within five miles of where I was operating. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, okay. this is 8,000 people. I mm-hmm. only need or want, yeah. more yeah. to the point, one a dozen. Yeah. I, you know, and you go, oh, 8,000 isn't very many. I only want a dozen. Yeah. I'm cool with 8,000 people. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is exactly it. So I think that actually you would be surprised in answer to the question for Julie as to how many uh, of your target market are on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. You know? uh, so, so yeah, don't, don't be afraid. To I, I really wanted it. to include that as a question because I, I hear that so much uh, from so many learners uh, that are with us with Parallel and, and that we support from other training providers. And I, I thought, you know, the fact that you are a, an expert in Facebook ads, I thought it was a great question to mm. add more um, clout behind that answer. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, so I've got two final questions, uh, Ricky. So based on life today, all your experiences, you've done you know, 17 odd years in financial world and you've 
grown companies up to you know a couple of million um you've changed career you've been in the trenches with clients you've moved your family to as a family to spain and now you've got a franchise gym chains moving um, with all that said what three things tips or bits of advice would you give somebody that wants to start out in fitness or coaching okay so the like we said earlier, um, the, the what, what, one of the first things would definitely be to make a commitment to improve your skills regarding marketing and sales. Cool. Um, yeah. That, and I think we, we back that up with everything we've said on the podcast so far. So how do you learn, qualify and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching. Um, another one would be to make a commitment to get comfortable in front of the camera. Love it. Yep. 100%. Like your marketing and your sales will be made so much easier. And the thing is, at first, if you're not used to it, you will hate it. You'll hate it. One of the mistakes, though, <laughs> that um, I see make, made by people that do this is, so let's say I'm doing it right now, okay, talking in front of the camera, and I'm about to do a video, and I'm like, hey, hey guys, Ricky here from Fit Body Ladies, and I just wanted to do this video for you today to like help you women. And the, 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 when you start doing it like that, it doesn't work very well and the reason for it and and do you know what it doesn't help you as well because in your mind what you what you're doing is you're thinking to yourself if it was that 45 to 55 audience you're thinking eight thousand people are going to be watching this oh my yeah, god yeah i've got to get this perfect <laughs> there's eight thousand people watching and it's so scripted that yes. you fluff up that first because you almost seconds. imagine yourself in an arena with eight thousand people like looking at you on stage and you don't want to be lynched and it's like okay so here's a really cool little tip that i learned early days and that is to imagine your what are your best clients if you haven't got any clients already then like just one of your friends someone that you know that is your target audience okay picture that person their face the struggles they've had, and just imagine that you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You're How talking simple. to that person How simple. directly. The moment that you do that, it all comes across as so much more authentic. It comes across as like you are, you're, you're, you're making a deeper connection to the people that are then watching that video because yep. it's as if you're talking to them directly, not... A massive audience of people and when it is a massive audience of people um something you know i we i was very guilty of this is i imagined say eight thousand people so i had to project my voice and throw yes. my voice out there and i changed my um posture and it would change my physiology and that would change yeah. the way i was breathing and i'd yeah. get to the end of that first um kind of opening <laughs> 10 seconds and i'd be like <gasps> and i'm like i can't breathe now and now yeah. i can't breathe i'd be like oh, i've got to start again oh, i've got to start mm. again and that video would never go live because mm. I would get to the end of that 10 seconds and be like, oh, how am I meant to talk? I can't even breathe. <laughs> but this, was, this, is a, this is it. And there'd be, so if you actually, so much of this is mental. And if you just imagine you're just having this one-on-one this -on -one conversation and you imagine that, that that person's just asked you a question that they're struggling with, you know, yeah. can you, I'm struggling like just with, um, like what to eat for breakfast at the moment. And so you, you just, you talk very casually as if you were having a chat over a coffee. Well, do you know what? Yeah. Like, you know, it's really common. And so this is what I'd recommend that you do, you know, just maybe do this, try this and if it works and, and, and when you do it like that, it, it just comes across so much more natural and it's unscripted and it doesn't have to be polished. And you take the, take an enormous amount of pressure off you. And it will then just come across so much better. Something that, that, that we do, we've got, we use a couple of uh, bits of software, um, Video Leap on iPhone and Camtasia on the, the laptop. Yep. So we, we, we nail down the actual raw, real, natural video. 
And then in terms of like, how do I end this or how do I start this? That's when you can start piecing these little video segments together. So it yeah. doesn't always, it, you know, it doesn't have to be in one take either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. On an app on my phone, InShot, which is free as an app yeah, on Android yeah. and, and uh, iPhone, iPhone you, can, yeah. you can marry up all of these little segments of video, um, mm. which has just made life so much easier. So commitment, mm. commitment to do more video, more face-to-face -face stuff. Um, what's your third tip, boss? So I would actually say that having an ability to to truly understand your 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 members your clients having this ability to um um to connect with them have empathy with them i i, I just to explain exactly what I'm talking, where I'm going with this because it's a it's definitely a myth that in order to have a successful fitness business that you have to be an amazing personal trainer, okay? Yeah. I see really, really, really technically gifted personal trainers that just know everything there is to know about the anatomy and like, you know, the perfect way to do a deadlift and all this sort of thing. They're, they're really, really good. But when it comes to, say, delivering a session to a group, they struggle. Yes. Um, they they struggle to connect even not even a group you know even if it's just like one-on-one -on -one, they struggle to actually connect to the person that they're trying to help yeah and and so what i discovered early on was that because i i'll admit i'm not i'm not a very good personal trainer i'm really not you know i've not been training for years anyway but i'm i'm just i'm not, from a technical standpoint i'm just not that great however when I was coaching, I still managed to help ladies get amazing results. And the reason for it was actually down to my ability to listen to their problems, to understand where they were coming from, and then to present a very simple solution on something they could try in the meantime. But you can only do that if you truly understand where they're coming from. If you, if you, kind of come at it from a standpoint of well like you know i'm going to use all these long words because i've trained to use these long words and i want to sound like a doctor and you're just going to lose people yeah. so actually yeah. being able to just understand them relate to them use language so i always like use i always used to say that i always used to imagine that whenever i'm trying to explain anything i've got to imagine that i so at the time it would have been no, my son would have been probably uh, what is he, thirteen now, so like seven, eight. I years think old. I know what you're going to say, actually. <laughs> yeah, just 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 explain it as if my son, who was like seven yeah. or eight at the time, explain it in a way that he would understand. <clears throat> Something we've uh, Haley mentioned already this morning in the classroom. She turned around and said, "So we could dive deep into anatomy and physiology, but I'm going to explain the whole weekend, and I'm going to get my Crayola crayons out." <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and if I can explain it in Crayola crayons and basic stick men and make it as super simple, you're probably going to laugh. You're going to remember it. You're going to enjoy it. And I like, that's, that's just amazing, right? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but it's so true. And it's a massive mistake that I see that, that trainers make. They feel like they've, they, they, they have to use like these, these, like the, the name of the muscles in like, Lad, it's like communicating to them in Latin or something. It's just like they don't, they don't care. Yeah, really. Unless you're training, like you know, athletes at a like real high level that have got a genuine interest in it. Like most, if you target market, do not care. They just you just want, need to be. Able they to want the result. How do I lose weight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Completely. it's just a case of like just using language that they understand. Do not feel that just because you've passed these exams that you then have to continue using that particular type of language. Completely. So we got, we got commitment, we got get in front of a camera more and a different level of empathy, but listening to the client and, and being present with the client and using language which is relevant to the client. Yeah, absolutely. Superb. So final question, uh, Ricky. And first of all, I just want to acknowledge your, your time today. Um, 
way longer than, than, than we'd planned. And I love that. Um, <laughs> a huge amount of value and content for the listeners. I hope you've enjoyed it. But I wanted to acknowledge your time, your energy, um, your passion and, and support that you've had and the impact you've had on many personal trainers, myself included over the years. And that kind of constant um, first for learning to better yourself um, in a selfless way that, that has impacted uh, like a ripple effect onto so many more people, your clients, your um, the personal trainers inside PT100K and the, the clients that they've gone on to, to make. So I wanted to mm. acknowledge that. So with, with, with all of that said, what's your definition of an outstanding coach? So, and so do you know what this this, is, this can be applied to any industry. So if we're talking about a coach specifically, it's having an ability to very clearly help the person that you are coaching understand exactly where they are right now, okay? And how shit that is. Where it. they are right now. Amazing. Okay? So first of all, help them identify because so, as I say, this applies to any industry, but so many people, well, they start to believe the story they're telling themselves and actually it's not all that bad. Yeah, I need to lose weight, but it's not all that bad. I need to lose weight, but, but you know, I'm, I'm still married and like, it's not all that bad. And it's, not, easy to just, it's easy to give a, a reason or a justification of why they're in this place. place and Especially when it's been over a sustained period of time. And, and for a better word, shine a shit. <laughs> yes, Exactly. <laughs> so it's having an ability to almost like hold the mirror up and say, yes. look, this is where you are right now and it's not good. And if you continue like this, then your life will be shit. And there's so much more that you're capable of. We get one fucking life. There's so much more that you're capable of. There's so much more that you can contribute to the world if you just wake up. <laughs> yes. 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 Yep. So it's having an ability to clearly help them understand exactly where they are right now and then help them to believe that there is this light at the end of the tunnel, that there is another way that they, uh, uh, like you, you, you sort of shown, you're giving them a little glimpse into what the future might look like if they commit to that waking up and they commit to the transformation and the change that they want to make so it's kind Amazing. of like look this is where you are right now and it's pretty shit this is what your life could look like if you change and i'll tell you what it's pretty damn cool you know how are you going to feel so let's just, this is where this is where you are right now and you're three stone overweight okay and you've already told me that um, you're embarrassed about taking your clothes off and in front of your husband. And like, you've already said that you, you don't like to go on holiday anymore uh, in the summer because like you're just embarrassed about getting on the beach with the kids. You can't keep up with your kids. That's, that's shit. But your kids are going to remember their childhood like, when they're older and they're going to look back and it's shit. So you've already told me that that's all like horrible and it's crap. So, so let's just fast forward three months. Let's imagine that you've lost a couple of stone and let's imagine that you've then like, you know, you're sort of painting this picture about what it all looks like. And how do you feel then? You know, all of a sudden you're squeezing back into those size 12s that you've not been able to wear for years. How do you feel? What are the comments you're going to receive from friends, from family? You've got this thing coming up, this party. Like, you're painting this picture about what life could be like. And then you've really sudden, kind of stretched the gap there, haven't you? You know, mm. over here, over here on one side, you've got, um, kind of a, a pit of pain and over here yeah. you've got like this is what could be if yes. that's what you want but yes. do you want that and and something that's been on every podcast so far has been this this comment of you're allowed to enjoy your life today <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely and, and, and so many people are I, it'll be all right when I'm there and it'll be okay when this lines up and we were talking before the podcast started about perfectionism having all the planets lined up but life never happens like that Doesn't. and 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 for for i think for coaches is to present this in their social media in their marketing in their emails in their videos but also in their results that they actually get with a client and how they deliver consultations and actually constantly say this is where you are mm -hmm. this is where you could be if you yep. want that 
Yeah. If you don't want that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Completely. However, what you've currently got, you've already said you're not happy with. So why, yeah. are you, why, why are you committing to suffering when you could commit to enjoying this every exactly goddamn it. day? This is exactly it. And then it's having this ability to, um, to, then, to then help them understand how to bridge that gap. Amazing. It's helping them understand how to how to bridge that gap. But what you've just said there, actually, I'm just going to I'm just going to add to that because, um, and this is another really important thing when it comes to things like you know the achievement of goals, the achievement of the goal. Okay, let me just use this as an example. The whole um, us trying to get to 20 uh, locations by the end of next year. So we're on six. We're in, like we're just touching November right now. We've got six. I mean, that's that's it's a big, hairy, audacious goal. It really is. Okay, and there's there's a lot of stuff that we uh, not just me but like if we talk about me that I'm going to need to learn and step up to and like d- d- delegate things and like th- th- there's an enormous amount we're going into unknown territory right now because I've got to be, be a really... different person in yes a year. yes you will be yes unrecognizable so in a year's time absolutely this, 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 this. so I'm I'm 100 committed to showing up every day and. I'm putting in the effort, the extraordinary effort that is necessary to achieve that goal. But if we fall short, let's say we only get to 15. The person I have become over the next 12 months as a result of making the commitment to achieve that is that's that's the thing that is amazing. That's that's, that's the, the win right there. That's the win. <laughs> That's the win. That's the win. So you don't get too hung up on that specific result. It's the person that you become along the way. Oh, oh, oh. there's a golden nugget right there. It's a person you become. And we're, really we're so fixed on the end outcome. And if we fall short of that, we beat ourselves up. We feel like a failure. And, and it's not like how it should failure. be. Whereas it was... a. So I can really relate to that. Is so many people said to me when I first ran my first ultra over 100k, they said, "Oh, it's great." You know, how do you feel? And I, you know, and I said, "Well, actually, I started talking about all the things I achieved in training and who I became yes. in training, all the yes. characteristics I now present in all areas of life because I did that goal." And they yeah. went, "Well, you're still proud that you ran 100k, aren't you?" I'm like, "I wasn't really bothered about the actual outcome. Yeah, it yeah, just happened it. to." It just happened to be the thing that made me get there. <laughs> yeah. What I was really interested in is... It's the new habits. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's the motivation. It's, yes. it's all those things that you... In order to, to run that race, you've got to have all those things every single day in your life. And so if you've got all those things every day in your life, then that's going to benefit you then as a, as a husband, as a business owner. Yes. It's like the, yes. it's, it, you can't not. So it's... It's who you become as a result. The race is almost relevant. <laughs> well, Ricky, I'd like to um, just say one, one final thank you and, and wrap it up for your time and effort today. Is there anything else you want to add to it before we, we sign off? No, not at all. No, no, no. Enjoyed it thoroughly. Amazing. Could talk all day, Neil. Could talk all day. Very I love good. this sort of shit. Have a wicked day ahead, boss. Thank you so much. Cheers, buddy. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Hayley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity, and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work, and that with the right structure, support, and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify, and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching.